Welcome to the workout. I am super excited. Today we have full body strength circuits. Now listen, two circuits of six exercises each. They're put back to back, so there's no rest in between these six exercises. And then at the end of that first circuit, we'll take a short break. We're gonna repeat those same exercises again for a second circuit, and then we'll go on to the second series of six exercises. Now listen, this definitely has a cardiovascular boost, and I want you to get that cardiovascular training effect. And my workouts really are different because I want you to be focused on your strength. Your job is to perform 12 repetitions of each set at a weight load where reps number 11 and 12 are challenging. If you get to the end of one of these sets of 12 and you feel like you could do 15, I want you to get harder resistance. If you're working out at home with re me right now and you are limited in your home exercise equipment, you can always do more repetitions to make the workout harder. But in the long term, I want you grabbing dumbbells and bands that are so challenging that you're cursing at me at repetition number 12. So you're gonna need a resistance band, some dumbbells, and some kind of a surface, either a bench, chair, step, fireplace, something that you are able to step onto and perform a couple of exercises from. I will give you some modifications, but it's ideal if you've got a stepping surface. Let's get started. Let's go through a few exercises here just to get prepared for the workout. Big inhale up, exhale it out. Let's do two more like that. When your arms come up over your head, reach, 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 reach way up out of your waistline. Do that one more time, inhale reaching all the way out of your waistline, up, 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 up to activate transverse abdominis. Exhale, bring your hands back behind you. Bring your shoulder blades together, interlock your fingers, and then activate them and press your hands back away from you, pulling your shoulder blades towards each other on the back end, opening up the chest, activating the shoulders in the posterior direction, which is where you always want them. Shoulders back and down, shoulders back and down like crazy. Relax it out. Let's come into some spinal rotations. You're just gonna let your arms naturally flow around you. Activate your glute on the leg that you're turning away from. This is gonna help to stabilize your pelvis so that your spine can rotate around a little bit more naturally. I love this move because it just releases some of that stickiness that you feel through your torso, your hips, your spine. It just gets us moving a little bit. Just let those arms flow around and make sure you're really squeezing your glute as you turn away. Squeeze that glute so that we're also activating and warming up the glute. Oh, it feels so good. And relax, feet together. Bend your knees, bringing your center of gravity closer to the ground. Bring your weight over onto one leg. If you are challenged by balance, find a spot on the floor in front of you about six feet and just hold there for a couple of seconds until your balance settles in, which it will. Keeping your standing leg bent, I want you now to start to look around your space. It's going to throw your balance off. That's the whole point of this exercise. And if you're saying to yourself, I can't do that, I can't keep my balance. That's actually the whole goal here. Please continue. Beautiful, yes, please continue. Hey, Christine, if I have any issues, let me know, okay? I don't know if Heidi's here today, thank you. Look around your space and you're intentionally trying to throw your balance off. That's the whole goal here, okay? Throw your balance off and relax. Switch sides and keep that knee bent. Take a moment to really stabilize yourself. Find your balance. Heidi, I see you. Thank you. <laughs> For those of you guys that are watching in playback, this is a live workout and I got my gang here with me. Heidi is my tech assistant every week. I'm so glad you were here. I didn't see you at first. Thank you, thank you. And look around your space, okay? So I can't tell you how many times my clients say to me, I can't do that. I lose my balance. That's the whole point. I want you to have to counter stabilize. And if you're doing this and you're super stable and you're not losing your balance, I want you to look way up. I want you to look behind you. 
move your head and your eyeballs because it should throw your balance off. And tell me how good that feels on that leg that you're standing on. Every single muscle of that leg is firing, including the arches of your foot. Looking up, looking around, keep that knee bent, super important, and relax it out. Take your feet super wide, look down, make sure they're truly parallel. I want your toes forward. Bend your knees, hips back. You already will feel a little bit of a stretch, and let's go side to side. Keeping your toes forward, pointing directly forward, unless you've got active knee discomfort, then you can let your toes open out a little bit. Pressing the hips back, sitting deeply, and once you feel warmed into it, once your body is kind of moving, let's take it a bit deeper, reaching all the way down and across, heavy on your heels. Ooh, isn't that awesome? This is so good as a dynamic preparatory move to get your inner thighs ready for the workout. That's gonna help them be ready for a couple of our exercises in the hopes of reducing too much muscle soreness after the workout. Also so good to fire up the glutes here. Drive into the heel as you press away from it so that you can really exaggerate the load and the emphasis on your glutes. Really reach it back, heart rate coming up. Let's do two more. And relax. Okay, just turn to your left, look at your feet, and make sure there's some space between them from left to right. You don't want your feet stacked in front of each other directly. A little bit of space. Reach your arms way up over your head so that you are actively lengthening up to the ceiling. And then I want you to just gently dip down and stand up for 10 times. Please count 10 on this leg, focusing on your front leg. Now you should feel equal pressure on each foot, but the majority of the work is on the front leg. Basic split squat here just to get us ready for an exercise inside of one of the circuits. 10 reps, super gentle. Relax, and let's just spin it around, hitting the other side. Take a look at your feet. Make sure you want your feet the width of your hips, okay? So there is maybe four to six inches between your feet so that you've got a wider base of stability. Arms up over your head, just naturally dipping down. If you're new to my workouts and this exercise bothers your back toes, that is a sign that I want you to start working on your foot and toe mobility. And this is a great exercise to work on that. So it is gonna bring a lot of flexion to the back toes. And that's part of the value of this move, to keep your feet and toes healthy, to get the glutes firing. It helps to improve balance. And if you're actively reaching way up out of your waist, you're gonna be activating your transverse abdominis. Super important core muscle. And relax, bring your feet together. From here, I want you to take a big reach up. You're gonna step back into a lunge, all the way down into a runner's lunge, and switch legs. Move faster or slower based on the speed that really works for you. I want you to very actively reach way up. Reach way up out of your abdomen here. Super tall. Letting that back knee come back and drop down onto the ground so that you're getting an opening in the front hip. Big opening, warming up the glutes, but also warming up and opening the front of the hips. Big reach, getting the heart rate up, being very deliberate with this move. And again, moving faster or slower based on what feels good for you today. And one more, and relax. Now, I want you to just step back into that lunge, an equal lunge here where you can be pretty comfortable, about 90 degrees at all of the joints 
on your lower body. Take a big inhale up, turn towards the leg that's in the front and bring your hand back to the heel behind you. Hold for a couple of seconds. Such a good stretch. Take your front hand up over the head, draw in through your abdomen to make sure that you are really activating the core, lifting up out of your waist and relax down, stepping forward, stepping back. Just switch sides. Again, about 90 degrees at all of your joints. Inhale up, turn towards the leg in front, hand the back heel. Is that not heaven? Come on, it's so good. That front hip of the knee that's down, the back foot gets a stretch. Oh, it's so good to get the rotation in your torso. And then when we add the arm, oh, does that not feel so good through your side? <laughs> it's just the best. I call this the world's greatest stretch. I think the world would agree with me. Big reach up out of your waist. Make sure you're getting that transverse abdominis included. Getting that muscle firing, reaching way up. Ooh, feels so good. Getting quadratus lumborum activated, that important back muscle that supports you throughout movement. And relax, hands down. Let's just step forward. And I want you to come into a bit of a crouch here, rocking back and forth, bringing some compression to the front, um, the front of your feet, okay? The four foot of each foot, the four feet, the four feet, the four foot. And I just want you to rock back and forth. Please continue. I'm just checking my technology. Rocking back and forth, bringing really great compression to the toes. That is what this is all about. We want lots of compression on the toes so that we get really good activation there, okay? If it's uncomfortable, that is proof that you really wanna be working on this exercise. Now listen, I want you to try this with me. Try bringing your knees to the ground and gently sitting back onto your feet. If it's torture, please use your hands. But the goal for all of us is to be able to sit back onto our toes and hang out here for about 30 seconds to a minute. Now, it's not exactly comfortable on my toes, but you should be able to work through it because this flexion is so important for foot health. You know those old grannies that you see around town or maybe even a relative of yours? So often they complain about how bad their feet hurt, right? because our feet really are so important in terms of how we use our body. You've got to keep your feet super, super healthy. Even if you think you've got arthritis in your toes, I promise you this position can help you over time. And relax, tip back onto your toes, lifting the knees. I want you to slowly roll up. As soon as you get there, lift your knees 10 times, please. I don't want you to get dizzy and we're gonna jump into the workout. We've got six strength exercises back to back. I'm gonna demonstrate them super fast for you so that if you wanna get out ahead of me and move faster, you can. Let me show you the six exercises super quick. We've got a resistance band. First exercise, band RDL. Band RDL, sorry, starting at the top, RDL and stand, okay? Second exercise, dumbbell, single arm row at a bench or some surface where you're able to bring one hand forward, sorry, let's bring one hand forward, one foot forward so that we're in a staggered stance, different than what we did last time. 12 reps on one arm, 12 reps on the other arm. Third exercise, dumbbell chest press. You can do this on the floor if you don't have a surface to work from, a bench or some kind of um, step or stair. You can do that on the floor for sure. Dumbbell pullover, we stay on our bench. Heavier dumbbell up over your head. 12 repetitions, definitely want a heavier dumbbell. And the last exercise is a tricep dip. So again, see if you can find a chair or something. Feet together, knees bent, dropping straight down and straight up. You guys ready? Let's do this. First exercise, band RDL. If you know me, 
You know I love this one. I'm gonna show you from the side. So take your band so that you've got equidistant from the handles under your feet. Feet are separated about hip width distance. Knees are bent. Bring a little bit of an arch to your lower back. Hands are right next to your knees or slightly below. Stand up, squeeze the glutes. There's one. Slight, natural, neutral arch in your lower back. Squeeze your glutes at the top right there. Really tucking the pelvis under slightly, completing the move to make sure those glutes are finishing with your hips directly under your shoulders. 12 reps. If it's a little easy, I want you to shorten the distance between your feet and your hands. One more. Next exercise, dumbbell, single arm row from a surface. If you don't have a surface, you can do the same exact exercise here. I love it if you've got a surface though. Um, one foot is back. That same arm is forward and you're pulling. Hand is coming up to the rib cage. And I want you to pause at the top unless if your dumbbell is super challenging, if your weight load is super hard, you then eliminate the pause. But if your weight load is challenging, where the last two reps are hard, but you're starting to lose your technique, I do want you to give me a little bit of a pause. It just makes the exercise so much better. It also helps to improve your technique. 12 reps, and let's go right into the other arm. Same thing, other side, pulling your hand towards your rib cage. But more than that, I want you to think about lifting your elbow high, bringing it up super high, so that that shoulder blade retracts towards your spine. Even though you're moving your arm here, this is an upper back exercise. And if you really get that little bit of a pause at the top, you're gonna notice that you actually feel this activation through the middle of your back, right around your bra strap area. Such a good exercise for rhomboids, lower traps, upper back, arms, everything. Third exercise, dumbbell chest press. Again, you can do this on the floor, and if you're at home with a barbell, you can also do this with your barbell. If you do have something like a bench or something to lay on, um, I encourage you to really challenge yourself with a good weight load here. This is a stronger movement pattern. Shoulders push towards your hips, shoulders also towards each other coming down until your hands are just outside of your chest and just the tiniest bit above your chest. You don't want your hands coming all the way down below your chest. Hands are gonna stop maybe about one to two inches above the midline of your chest. That's to keep the workload, the weight load, on your pectoral muscles, your chest muscles, but it's really also to protect the front of the shoulder. So when you come down super, super low on this exercise, it puts a lot of stress and strain on the anterior deltoid, and we wanna keep the work on the pecs. Shoulders towards your hips, 12 reps. Next exercise, dumbbell pull over. Single dumbbell overhead pull over. Let me make sure, let me check my notes, hold on. No, I lied, sorry. Bench step ups are next. I lied to those of you guys the first time around. We've got bench step up next. You can do this body weight or with dumbbells, whatever feels best for you. We've got leading up, up, down, down on one foot. Leading with your left foot for 12 reps and then we will go to the other foot, okay? Leading with one foot, I call it cycling. So it's up on the left, down on the left, or right, it doesn't matter, but I just wanna make sure that you're leading with one foot for 12 reps. Stand up super tall, get the whole foot up onto your stepping surface. 12 reps, and I will give you a modification if you don't have something to step on. Other leg. If you don't have something to step on, 
Really the only best substitute would be to do a split squat. This is gonna be as close as we can get to a bench step up because technically a bench step up is what we call a level change. We want your body having to change levels and that's the value of the exercise. So see if you can find something in your surrounding, anything to step up onto. Even if it's only a couple of inches high, it still is gonna give you a little bit more of that level change. Keep your chest up, super tall. Driving into the heel, 12 reps. Then we're gonna be going on to that dumbbell pullover from the lying position. Let's do that. You've got one dumbbell. You can do this from the floor if you don't have a bench surface. Dumbbell starts up over your chest. Push your chest towards your hips, super important. A Little bit of a natural curvature in your lower back. Scoop up over the head, drive through the heels of the palms. Drive through your palms. So imagine if there were a resistance band attached to your hands <clears throat> and then anchored up above your head behind you. The resistance would be here, pulling, right, against that resistance. <clears throat> That's the energy you want right here, pulling, so that you're sending the activation towards your feet, keeping your shoulders towards your hips. One of my absolute favorite exercises. <coughs> oh my gosh, excuse me, you guys. <coughs> we got the fall season change here and there is stuff in the air <coughs> that's getting me good in the back of the throat, apologies, and relax. Okay, now we've got that. Um, you guys, I am all over the place. Hold on one second. <coughs> Give me one second. We don't have a bench dip next. We've got, from here, we've got a push-up. So sorry, I looked forward to my second circuit. So the sixth exercise in this first circuit is an incline push-up. See if you can find a chair or some raised surface in your surroundings. It can even be a kitchen counter. We're doing an incline push-up. <clears throat> Hands are just outside of your chest, about the width of your shoulders, feet together. I want you to drop into your hips and join me for a push-up. Now, you don't have to come all the way down. Come down to a depth where you feel <clears throat> the activation in your chest muscles. A lot of people think push-ups are about the arms, but you really wanna be thinking about pushing from your chest muscles, keeping the shoulders locked off. There's not a lot of change at the shoulders. This is all about your chest pectoral muscles, keeping a natural curvature in your lower back. 12 reps, if 12 is easy, please do more and relax. Short break, those are the six exercises in this first circuit. Let me repeat, if you wanna get out ahead of us, they are band RDL, dumbbell single arm row, dumbbell chest press, bench step up, dumbbell pullover, and then push up. So this circuit is legs, back, and chest. We're gonna repeat those six exercises in about 10 to 15 seconds. Then I will go on to the next circuit, which is legs, shoulders, and arms. One of my favorite workouts, this is a good one. So short little break, move around, get a drink of water, especially if you've got seasonal allergies popping up. And let's get in place for our second round of these six exercises. Okay, band RDL. Listen, if that first set was comfortable, I want you to shorten the distance between your hand and your feet. You can also do this exercise with dumbbells or a barbell. If you've got a barbell at home, go for it. I really do love this variation of Romanian deadlift. I love a band 
RDL. Okay, so shorten that distance if it was easy on your first set. Under your feet, feet are about hip width distance apart. From the bottom, bend your knees. A little bit of a neutral curvature in your lower back. Hands come up to about the knees. Really bring your shoulders back and down, and here we go. Squeeze the glutes at the top, all the way up so that your glutes finish under your shoulders. There's a real tendency to kind of come to here. I see people do this a lot. You really want to get into the habit of finishing every single time you do an exercise like this, you always wanna come back to perfect posture. It's a way to reinforce the muscles in charge of giving you good posture. Listen, good posture is just not, it's not just an aesthetic thing. When you've got good posture, it's helping to keep all of your joints in alignment, to keep them healthy and happy over time. So posture is really about stacking your joints and getting all of the right musculature to hold you in the ideal posture. 12 reps, we've got dumbbell, single arm row. And again, here too, if you are part of my regular workout crew, you can do this with a barbell. You could do this um, with a resistance band if you want, or I invite you to grab a challenging, Dumbbell, 10 pounds or more is your goal. One foot, one hand forward. Here we go, bring your hand to your rib cage. If the dumbbell is not challenging, make sure you're giving me a pause at the top. Give me a longer pause if that dumbbell's real easy. And if you don't have a heavier weight load at home, I want you to consider getting an extra set of dumbbells. You're gonna get the most out of this workout by really focusing on building strength. Strength and muscle really are the panacea of health, especially for women. So I really wanna make sure that we're building muscle, helping you to get stronger. 12 reps, same thing on the other side. One foot, one hand forward. Hand is right below that shoulder, abs drawn in. Bring your hand to the rib cage. Pausing. And again, if you are more experienced here and you're working with 20, 30, 40 pound dumbbell, you can eliminate the pause. When you're really working on building muscle size, which many women are interested in doing, you've got to be doing a heavy enough weight load so that you're really inspiring what we call myofibrillar hypertrophy. It's actually making the muscle fibers fatter, bigger and you've got to be doing that at a heavy enough weight load and that might mean that you can't pause at the top 12 reps and dumbbell chest press now remember you can do this from the floor if you don't have a bench get creative you could do it from your couch if you have a piano bench whatever you have get creative because by doing this from an elevated surface right here, you're able to get your elbows a little bit lower than if you do it on the ground. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing this flat from the ground. You're just gonna get a little bit more out of it if your elbows are able to drop below the level of your body. And again, remember, you only want your hands to come outside of your chest line, the middle of your chest line. Technically, your hands are at the bottom edge of your chest line, the middle of your breast line. Hands are just below from top to bottom. But then from up to down here, you want the hands to end above the height of your body, just a little teeny tiny bit. 12 reps and relax. One dumbbell goes down, grab a heavier dumbbell if you need to, and we've got dumbbell pullover from the bench. Bring that dumbbell to start up over your chest, shoulders towards your hips, really activate your core, and then a nice big arc up over your head, just until you feel the load 
of the dumbbell on your back. So this is a great exercise for your triceps. I actually really love it for the back of the arms. And if you can get your shoulders anchoring towards your hips, right here, you're actually gonna feel it the most in your lats. The latissimus dorsi, the biggest muscle of your upper back. And that's actually why I do this exercise. To me, this is a lat exercise. Other people do it for their chest. Some people do it for their triceps. But if you really anchor your shoulders towards your hips, you're gonna feel it in the lats right there. It's an incredibly transformational exercise. It's why it's one of my hands down ultimate favorite of all. Okay, we got push-ups. Now, I'm having you do them elevated from a surface because it helps to train you towards a traditionary military push-up, but you can certainly do these from the ground. I strongly encourage you to do them with bent knees on the ground unless you are experienced and you know you have great push-up technique. Hands are outside about the width of your shoulders. Feet are together, and here we go. You've got 12 reps now. Depending on the height of your surface, you might be able to go a little faster. And if your surface is challenging, you might go a little bit slower. I want you to really focus on good technique here. Driving through the chest, keeping your shoulders drawn towards each other, keeping your shoulders down towards your hips, and really pushing through the palms. Abs drawn in, 12 reps, about two more. And good job. Short break, walk it out, grab a sip of water. If you want to do a third set of that superset, go for it. While you're resting and sipping on your water, I'm gonna show you the next six exercises of the next superset. Same theme, we're gonna do all six in a row, take a short break, and then repeat. First exercise, she's a doozy. It's another one that's at the top of my list. Can you guess? Bulgarian split squats, you knew it. I'm so predictable. Okay, feet together. You're gonna bend your knees. Um, I prefer the top of the foot on the bench, but you can certainly tuck your toe if that feels better for you. Dropping straight down with the work on this front heel, straight up. There is a bit of a forward lean. You are not perfectly up and down here, okay? You wanna have a little bit of a forward lean. 12 on each leg. Next exercise, dumbbell overhead press. Moderate to challenging weight load. We're gonna maintain a neutral grip. That means that your palms are facing each other, straight up over your head, straight down. Now, I love a 45 degree neutral position, which is here. So we're not here, and we're not fully rotated forward. We're right in the middle, shoulder, directly hands over the shoulders, heading towards your head. Second exercise. Third exercise is tricep bench dips, which I teased when I made the mistake on the first set. Okay, hands are under your hips. Get them under your hips, feet together, knees bent, straight down, straight up. Keep your knees bent. You're not moving away from the bench. You're going straight down, straight up. Fourth exercise. Moderate weight dumbbells, we've got a squat press. Toes are turned open slightly, squat into press. So this circuit is legs, shoulders, and arms, and your arms are gonna feel awesome after this next circuit. Next exercise with, you're gonna keep the same dumbbell weight load or go a little bit heavier, dumbbell, upright row, elbows are ending either at the height of your shoulders or a little above, depending on the health of your shoulders. And last exercise, palms forward. We're doing alternating 
supinated bicep curls. So the arms swap simultaneously, a total of 24 repetitions, which would be 12 on each side. And you may need to go heavier or lighter on that last exercise. All right, you ready? Let's get set for Bulgarian split squats. You can do these body weight only if you want. And if you are more experienced, grab some dumbbells. Five pounds, 10 pounds, three pounds, two pounds, whatever works for you. Feet together, lower your center of gravity, bending that front knee, one toe back, find your balance, and we are coming down at a slight angle and up. Front leg is doing the work here. Drive into the front heel, 12 reps. Standing super tall, keeping your dumbbells right under the shoulders, or as I said, you can do this body weight only. And if it's better for you to do it body weight only, if this exercise is challenging for you, you're just gonna use your hands for a little bit of extra support at the bottom. Use your hands on your front leg just to stabilize you and give you a little bit of support right here at the bottom. It's not cheating. Listen, you wanna make sure that you learn these exercises with good technique, body weight only. Because if you start loading bad technique, you're reinforcing bad technique. It's really critical that on some of these more complicated exercises, you really wanna make sure that you are getting your technique beautiful with just your body weight before you add load. I'll tell you, I practiced, and I still do, I practice this exercise a lot with just my body weight. I don't know if you can hear my shoe making all kinds of noise back there, but since my microphone is so close, hear that? I don't know why these shoes are like really noisy on my mat today, <laughs> on my bench. Okay, focus on driving into that front heel, keeping that little bit of a forward lean right there. Just a little bit forward lean, 12 reps, and relax. Next exercise, dumbbell overhead chest press, 45 degree neutral grip. Here, straight up, 12 reps. At the bottom here, I don't want you to fully relax. There should be tension here at the bottom because at the bottom here is actually where you get a lot of the value of this exercise. So you wanna make sure that your pause happens here without fully releasing the tension from medial deltoid, that big, gorgeous shoulder muscle. 12 reps and bench tricep dips. Any surface, even if you don't have a bench, find a kitchen step stool, a chair, a typical kitchen chair. Dining room chair works great for this exercise. Hands are gonna start under your hips, feet together. Bend your knees. Booty hangs just off your surface. Straight down and lift. If 12 with perfect technique are easy for you, you can do 15 or 20. If you've got 15 or 20 and they're easy, I would suggest adding a dumbbell or a weight plate at your hips so that you can then load the exercise. Chest is up, big lift on that chest, 12 reps. 12 to 15, depending on your technique, depending on your skill level. One more. Bench, sorry, squat and press. Grab yourself a slightly heavier, moderate to heavy dumbbell. Feet are separated about between hips and shoulder widths distance apart. And you do want your toes turned open a little. You'll probably almost never hear me tell you to keep your feet perfectly paralleled 
except for preparatory exercises. When it comes to strengthening, your feet really are supposed to be turned out a little teeny tiny bit so that you fully activate your glutes, and that's where we wanna set it. So squat, immediately press, 12 reps. Squat, press. Pushing way up super tall, dumbbells ending over the shoulders towards the center of the head. You can bring your dumbbells together if you want at the top, but you don't have to. Straight up. One thing that's super valuable is to make sure that your arms come to full extension here. 12 reps, and then we've got dumbbell upright row. Body weight on the heels. One more. Oh, your arms are gonna feel so good. After this circuit, I can already feel my shoulders, right? When you add the chest from the first circuit to this one, arms are good. Okay, elbows end at the height of your shoulders or slightly upward, depending on the health of your shoulders. If you are skilled with this exercise, if you've got healthy shoulders, you can go heavy here, 10 pounds, 12 pounds, 15 pounds. And if you are learning it or have kind of tricky shoulders, let's keep it to five, eight, maybe 10 pounds. You're gonna feel a lot of this right on that medial deltoid, which is that beautiful cap at the end of the shoulders. Oh, feels so good. When you really get into medial deltoid with an exercise like this, it just feels so good. This is your medial deltoid, this guy right here. It's what creates that really beautiful athletic arm, more so than biceps, believe it or not. Last exercise, palms facing forward, which means supinated, starting one up, one down. And we've got alternating supinated bicep curls. So 24 in total, 12 on each arm. And you can count it one, two, three, four to 24, or you can count each arm for 12. One, two. However it works for you, but remember, in order to really get the muscles stronger here, super important that when we get to the 12th repetition, you're feeling it. You wanna stop by the 12th repetition on each arm, 24 in total, you wanna be like, oof, I'm feeling that. It puts the work in workout, for sure. And 24, short break. Those are your six exercises for this second superset. Grab a drink of water, keep your feet moving, Turn your music up, tighten your shoelaces, because we're getting ready for the second round of this superset. Then, depending on, we're gonna do it. At the end of this circuit, we're gonna do the monster Mac Daddy circuit, if you're up for it, and we're gonna put both of the circuits together. But first, the window is blowing. I have a huge stack of papers right in front of the window and there are now about 45 pieces of paper all over my office from the wind blowing them in every direction. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay, so just to repeat, we're going into this second circuit and then we're gonna put both the circuits together for 12 exercises in a row. Are you up for it? All right, let's do it. Bulgarian split squat with or without dumbbells, feet together. Let's do this, okay? Bend your knees so you're beginning with a bent front knee. Here we go. Use your hand on that front leg if you need it. 12 reps. Focusing on your front heel. Really drive into that front heel, okay? Super strong, keeping the load of your body weight on that front foot, but more specifically on your front heel. You will feel it in your quadriceps on the front leg, but I want you to feel it more on the glute and the hamstring 
of the front leg. 12 reps and immediately going into that other side. Feet together, bend the knees. Remember, you can always move faster or slower than I am. You can always do heavier weight loads, body weight only. Really depends on your fitness level, your skill level, your mood, and where your body is today. Do you guys notice this is so strange? So my right foot on the bench doesn't make any noise. What's up with that? But when my left foot's on the bench, it's like so noisy. Do you notice that? <laughs> I guess I must move my other foot around on the bench a whole lot more because now it's nice and quiet. Okay, drive into that front heel. Remember, you want a little bit of a forward lean here at the bottom. You're not straight up and down. Driving into that front heel, 12 reps, and relax. Dumbbell overhead press. Moderate to challenging weight load. Neutral hand position, straight up. 12 reps. Now, the more you keep your shoulder blades anchored downward, right there. Shoulder blades should sink heavy into your body, even when your arms are fully extended. Here, okay? And when you get that, that's when you get the best, the best stimulus on the muscle. So, arms are straight, arms are long, but shoulders always drop back and down, back and down. Shoulders back and down. Aaron, are you with me? Bench, tricep, dips. So Aaron in our community, a dear friend, sent me a beautiful gold bracelet that was engraved with shoulders back and down, which I just thought was the coolest, sweetest gift ever. Shoulders back and down, let it be a reminder. Hands under your hips, knees bent, straight down, straight up. Really lift your chest super high. Now remember, if 12 is comfortable for you, let's do 15. If 15 is comfortable, you got 20. And if 20 is comfortable, you gotta add some weight at your hips. Love this exercise and not just for the triceps. It's actually really, really good for your core. Again, if you keep your shoulders back and down and in a very healthy place, so good for the core. And relax. Squat and press is next. Grab yourself a moderate to heavy dumbbell. Maybe it's five pound dumbbells, tens. If you're more advanced, grab 15, 20. You name it, it really depends on your fitness level. Feet separated, toes open, you ready? Give me a beautiful squat with your chest up, full press, 12 reps. Again, shoulders down here. Even though your arms are fully straightening, even though you're pushing upward, you still wanna keep your shoulders anchoring towards your hips. Twelve reps. One more, feeling those shoulders. And dumbbell, upright row. Feet hip distance apart, shoulders back and down. Here we go, big row. Keep the neck relaxed, pulling elbows nice and high. Using your breath, and then we've got bicep curl after this, and then you know what we got. A little rest before the Mac Daddy Monster Circuit of them all. 12 exercises, back to back, hitting all of your body, every major muscle group, 
and maybe every minor muscle group too. All in one circuit. Here we go. Take a short break. You got about 20 to 30 seconds. Get into position. Now, if you are feeling that workout already, go ahead and move into a cool down. Go through a couple of stretches. Take a longer break if you need to. Then, if you're up for it, join me for this monster circuit. 12 exercises all in a row, and then we cool down, and then you go about your day. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this in playback, I invite you to join me and my friends who are here today. Oh, you can't hear them, they're all on mute. <laughs> but if you wanna join us for a live workout, check the link below and visit me at hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout and you can join me on a Saturday for a live workout. So much fun. Okay, here are your 12 exercises. Band RDL, dumbbell single arm row, dumbbell chest press, bench step up, dumbbell pullover, and push up. That's your first circuit. Then we're going to repeat the circuit we just did. Bulgarian split squat, dumbbell overhead, bench dips, squat and press, dumbbell upright row, bicep curl. Cool? So if you want to push it and go for a heavier, faster circuit, go for it, do it, or let's go. Join me. We're starting with that band RDL. Again, you can do this with dumbbells if you prefer. And if you've got a barbell, go for it. One of these days we will do a barbell focused live workout. So if you've got a barbell and that's something you would be interested in, do let me know. All right, you ready? Knees bent, right? A little neutral arch in your lower back. Here we go. Fully stand, getting your hips directly underneath you squeezing your glutes right there. Now listen, an RDL, super powerful exercise. Romanian deadlift, which is different than a typical deadlift. This is different. This is called a stiff leg deadlift because you're not really actively bending your knees a whole lot. It's really more of a hip hinge, but oh, it's one of my favorite exercises. I know I have a lot of favorite exercises, but this one is just so good. You know, if you worry about back issues. This is one of the best exercises you can do for your back. It's just so good for the glutes and the hamstrings, posterior chain in general. One more dumbbell single arm row. Second exercise. One hand forward, one foot forward. Hand comes to your rib cage. Give me a little pause. If your dumbbell is manageable, right? If that weight load is pretty comfortable for you, give me a bit of a pause at the top. Use your breath. Shoulder moves towards the hip. 12 reps and same on the other side. Foot forward, hand forward and go. You'll notice that one arm feels a lot more natural with this exercise than the other. Generally, that's because one shoulder girdle has a different alignment than the other. A lot of times there's a weakness in one of the shoulders. One of your shoulders will be rotated forward more than the other. And so one of the values of a unilateral exercise like this is that you're able to really focus on each arm um, independently to see which one is stronger, which one's better. Put more love into the arm that doesn't feel as agile or as strong or as natural. Dumbbell chest press, either on the floor or from your bench. I like having knees bent because it gives you just a bit more um, commandment of your back muscles, okay? Because I actually don't want your back perfectly flat to the ground. We want a little bit of a neutral, gentle, natural curvature in your lower back for this exercise. There's a time and a place for a flat back, but um, over all of these years, I've come to really believe that it's just not productive unless you have great body awareness and proprioception. And then you'll notice in the powerlifting community, they're proponents of a super arched 
back. And I think that there is a time and place for that as well. A good happy medium is right here. Knees bent, natural, gentle, neutral, curvature at your lower back. I think we got bench step ups next. Yes, bench, no, wait. Yes, bench step ups, woohoo. With or without dumbbells, whatever feels best for you. We're gonna lead with one foot for 12 reps and then we'll go to the other side for 12 reps and then we've got the dumbbell pullover. Here we go. Leading with your left, leading with your left. So it's left up, left down, left up, left down. I want you to stand super tall, super, super tall. Imagine you've got a string at the top of your head here, pulling you up, energetically pulling you up as if you were a puppet, pulling you up. So you're super tall, no slouchy here. You'll see it all the time, especially at the gym, slouchy, slouchy, bad technique at the top. <laughs> That's because the legs don't wanna have to push that upper body up. And so what happens is when you get slouchy, your legs have to do less work because there's less distance on the lever of your body. So stand up super tall. And again, like I was saying earlier in the workout, you know, the reason why we strength train is to bring proper alignment and balance to the body. So your technique is everything because the whole reason why we're here is to strengthen you in perfect alignment. And that's so that your joints stay healthy for the rest of your life. And you don't get that diagnosis of arthritis. Listen, up. Arthritis is not hereditary. Arthritis is not something that just happens because you get older. Arthritis is because the bones are not in alignment and they get irritated. Arth bones, itis, irritation. They're irritated. They're irritated because your muscles are not keeping them where they need to be in beautiful alignment. And that is why we're here. So please focus on good alignment. Dumbbell pullover and good alignment there means shoulders push towards your hips here. Push your shoulder girdles towards your hip. Push it down, feel your abs. Holy cow, major ab workout here. I'm telling you, when I am at my own peak performance, which I'm not right now, but when I am, I'll do this exercise with 40, 45 pound dumbbell. And my abs get more ripped than ever without ever doing a crunch in part because of this exercise. So when you push your shoulder girdle and you really anchor it to your hips, your core is responsible for that. And all of the muscles of your core engage, embrace, and anchor your shoulder girdle down. And you end up getting an awesome ab workout while we're also getting an incredible exercise for your lats and your triceps. And some men would actually say that's an exercise for your chest. So your chest is involved as well. Push up, you ready? Find your surface. Promise me if you're doing this military style from the ground, my friend, promise me you've got excellent technique. This is an exercise that very few escape alive. <laughs> Meaning you are really prone to injury on a push-up if you're not doing it with great technique and that's why I like an incline or knees bent if you're on the ground. Let's go. Hands a little wider than your shoulders, feet together. Here we go. 12 reps. Use your breath. Really fuel yourself throughout the move. Shoulders towards your hips. Here too. When you get your shoulders down, such a good core exercise. Use your breath. And while that's a great exercise for your chest and your core, yes, of course, 
it can also really help make your arms look incredible. Exercise number seven, we're moving into that second circuit here. Exercise number seven, Bulgarian split squat. Are you doing it body weight only or are you doing it with dumbbell? Listen, both are awesome. I had to practice this exercise for years with just my body weight until my glutes and my hamstrings really got strong enough to be able to sustain this, right? And so it took me, there's that noisy foot again. Um, so it took me, isn't that hilarious? What is up with this? This foot is so noisy. Um, it took me years to really refine this movement, to get my hamstrings and my glutes up to speed that I could add a weight load to it. And even still there are days where it's hard. So if you're practicing this with just your body weight only, no shame in that game. Get it right before you load it. One more. Same thing on the other side. And I gotta tell you, this is hands down, and even in the fitness industry, amongst my peers, everyone will tell you, this is a hard exercise. Really, it puts so much work isolated on that front leg. You kinda can't cheat on this exercise. Focus on that front heel. Front heel. So good on that glute, isn't it? Amazing. Twelve reps of good booty loving right there. Dumbbell overhead press. How much weight you got today? Now, listen. Even if you are new to your strength training journey, three pounds here. Five pounds can work. It's all about where you are. And if you're super fit, I want you grabbing 15, 20, 25 pound dumbbells. Keep the neck relaxed, shoulders down. Shoulders down and back. Oh, so good on the arms. Amazing. 12 reps. Bench dips, how you doing? We got, this is number, exercise number nine. We got four more. Bench dips, squat and press. Upright row. Bicep curl, are you with me? Bench dips, let's do this. Hands under your hips, okay? You really wanna make sure that at the top of the exercise, your hands are directly below your shoulders. So if you have wider shoulders, your hands are wider. If you've got narrower shoulders, hands really come under your butt, okay? So depending on the width, look down, your hands should be right below your shoulders. Feet together, knees bent, straight down, straight up. Lift your chest super high. The higher you lift up here, the more this becomes a great upper back exercise. So, you know, if you've been around here for a while, you're learning that even exercises that people call a tricep exercise like this, actually can serve other purposes. This is a great upper back exercise if here you push up super high. If you really keep your chest lifted here, you're gonna feel a lot more work from the upper back as well as your core. Every exercise, when you do it right, has a value in a different body part. So that's one of the reasons why I love proper resistance training so much because you think you're doing an exercise for your biceps, but it can be equally good for your shoulders and your core. Every single exercise. Okay, here we go. Squat and press, and then we've got band, upright row. Okay, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The end is in sight. Let's go. Push super tall, sit nice and deep all the way down. I want you to really see it, sit deep with that booty. 
Give me a great squat. If you're learning your squat, you can bring your hips back to a chair or a bench. Super tall, right here. Use your breath, nice and long. Getting strong. Twelve reps. Dumbbell, upright row. Here we go. Whatever weight load feels right for you. If your heart rate is up, make sure you lift your knees a few times before you stop for the next exercise. And then we're going into dumbbell, upright row. Elbows end at the height of the shoulders, right here. Or if you got healthy shoulders, let's bring those elbows a little higher. I have super healthy shoulders. I can do almost anything with my shoulders, but it wasn't always that way. In fact, I injured my shoulder by doing push-ups. And all these years later, I have rehabbed my shoulders to the point where they are nearly bulletproof. So when you've got healthy shoulders, you can do anything, any kind of overhead pressing. You can do a really great upright row with those elbows super high. But if you've got tricky shoulders, remember, it is not a death sentence. You can rehab any joint anytime you want. Alternating, supinated, bicep curls. Last set. Shoulders back and down. Here we go, you ready? Starting with your hands, opposite. There we go. Alternating. Bring your shoulder blades towards each other so that you're anchoring them back towards each other and down towards your hips. What that does is that activates a whole bunch of muscles around the shoulder girdle, including your core and your lats and your triceps, believe it or not. But more importantly, in my opinion, what it does is it helps to take the work and the load off your upper trapezius, your traps. So by keeping your shoulders down, you don't overload your traps. Traps are an important muscle, and we don't want them overloaded because that's when you end up here with a lot of neck tension and overdeveloped traps. How are you feeling? You did it. Good job. Let's take, oh boy, that was a long workout. Let's take a quick little cool down here, come into a spinal rotation. Oh yeah, you earned it. If you're still with me in this workout, I am proud of you. That was over an hour. I don't know where the time went. Holy moly, that flew, which is exactly why I love working out with you. Time flies, it's like you enter the vortex. Let's cool it down. Just a couple of exercises, and then I will set you free. If you wanna join me live for this workout, you'll get to join the workout after the workout. We're gonna be doing our mini, our walking lunge mini workshop. So a few sets of walking lunges just to finish out that workout. Take a big inhale up, exhale. Do that again. And on your exhale, bring your hands back behind, interlock, open the chest. Let's open up that chest because we did those push-ups, we did the chest press, which is very closing to your upper body, and so we wanna make sure we get some really good opening here, right? And relax, let's bring the arm across the body for a shoulder stretch, and you're just gonna bring that arm in across the body low. Make sure you're not up here, you're down here and you're using this hand to really pull that arm in and under to get a little bit of a stretch through the top of the shoulders. Same on the other side, bringing it across, down and low right here. Good stretch through that shoulder. I'm right on my microphone, I know, if you can hear it and relax, quad stretch. Now, if you need something for balance, please find it. This is a stretch you should do every single day. Feet together, bend your knees, keep the standing leg bent. Grab your heel or your toe, grab a strap if you need to. Tuck your pelvis under, it's gonna kick your knee forward and then pull your knee back. 
right there is such a valuable quad stretch. Every single woman should be doing this every single day. Yes, yes, every woman, every day. That is a blanket statement and it does apply <laughs> to every single woman on earth. I don't think I've ever met a single woman who has super flexible quadriceps. Unless maybe she's a dancer, a professional dancer, or a professional yogi, uh, even then, even then, there tends to be tightness in the quadriceps because women are built uh, where our pelvis has more of an anterior rotation as compared to men. And so when you've got that anterior rotation of the pelvis, your quads get tight. And so if your glutes are weak at all, which 90% of women have weak glutes, that adds to that anterior rotation of the pelvis and the quads get tight. So promise me you'll do that every single day. Thanks so much for being here. Leave a comment below if you're watching this in playback. I hope to join you to join us live one of these times. Come to hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout. The link is below. I'll see you next time.